Hey everyone, uh, welcome to our webinar this morning. It's 11 a.m. in New Jersey, where some of us are located. Some others, uh, Brian Lagunas is with us. He's over in uh, Boise, Idaho. Constantine Dinev is with us. He is over in Sofia, Bulgaria. Um, and we have George Abraham, who's going to be sort of the main event here today. He's in New Jersey with me. Uh, and Steven Johnson is also on the line from the product team. And today we're really excited. We are going to walk you through uh, a brand new product that we are releasing to the public today. It's still a preview, but it's a pretty darn good preview. Uh, we plan on releasing it officially to the market next year around Q1, uh, end of Q1, beginning of Q2, so March, April timeframe. Um, so let's get let's get this thing going. We're going to talk today about Indigo Design App Builder, and the whole goal is to help you build web apps blazing fast. Uh, there's a Bitly um, URL here that goes right to the product page, so it's real easy to remember. Bitly App Dash Builder One. Um, so please click that, and you can you can of course learn more right at the product page. One of the things about a preview is that this is not a release product yet. Uh, the whole point is to get feedback. So we need your feedback on what you need in a tool like this. So the email is simple, feedback at indigo.design. And we have our product team who monitors that mailbox um, and they will accept your feedback, probably get back in touch with you to get more details. And then we'll see how that feedback incorporates in with kind of what we're trying to build. So the whole idea here is uh, we want you to be more productive building applications. So Indigo Design App Builder is a brand new cloud-based WYSIWYG drag and drop tool that helps teams uh, and uh, helps design teams and dev teams build complete business apps faster than before. I had a little typo there, sorry. So what we saw in the market for the last 20 years, pretty much ever since Visual Basic kind of went away, I'm talking VB6, is that everyone goes back and says, we want the same productivity that we had in VB6. Well, how can we get that productivity? Visual Studio um, sort of did it with Windows Forms. It wasn't quite the same. And then there's been all kinds of tools pop up, but now we've kind of reverted back to the caveman age and everyone is typing code in Visual Studio code. So you sit there all day, there's no design tools um, for developers um, and even developers and designers to work together that helps them design an experience um, for a customer. So what we wanna do is with all of our UI components and all of our experience with Indigo Design as a UX platform, we want to help you um, deliver apps faster. So App Builder is really around helping digital product teams to be more productive. Um, there's really no WYSIWYG drag and drop tools out there today. As I mentioned, you're writing a lot of code. Uh, you're doing a lot of hand, hand coding, a lot of boring stuff, really. Repetitive, boring stuff. I was in uh, Japan a couple years ago talking to um, a director at one of our big financial services companies, and he said it drives him crazy every time he walks by his developers and they're just hand coding basic HTML and CSS, and you know, there's no... There's no tools anymore. So how can we get back to productivity? And that's really what this is about. One of the things we know for sure, um, not only because we employ, you know, hundreds of developers at Infragistics who help us build product, but we talk to customers is that when you're moving from a desktop platform to something else on the web, things like CSS and layout are really hard. And tools uh, can help do that. WYSIWYG tools can help you learn it faster um, and they can help you get better results faster. So with this intuitive drag and drop, you can save up to 80% of time per screen and per app. And that's no joke. When you start looking at the productivity gains from having a real production, high quality, dev ready code um, versus some spaghetti code, um, you're saving a ton of time. You don't have to go and redo stuff. Um, and that's our whole uh, idea with this. And then everything that we're doing here, and this has been the story with Indigo Design for the last couple of years, is we have a design system, and design systems work really, really well when they're backed by components. So go read every article on Medium um, that tells you how great design systems are. Well, they're normally and usually missing one thing, components that actually map to the design system. 
without that, it's sort of like big deal. It's just another thing that we've been doing the same way for 20 years, throwing something at a development team and expecting them to get like the same exact result. Um, so with the design system, with UI components that back of the design system, you have a huge uh, time advantage, cost savings, ROI, time to market, all the things that your managers actually care about when they're thinking about team tooling to drive productivity in your platform. So how does this actually work? Uh, it, it's real simple. There's a few steps here and I'm going to talk about this and then George is going to walk you through the product step by step. So this is all in the cloud. Uh, you go to a URL, you log in with either G Suite or Office 365 or your Infragistics email, um, and bam, you are into a 100% cloud-based WYSIWYG. Uh, there's no dependencies, you don't have to install anything. Uh, in the future, we may make this like an Electron app for the desktop based on your feedback, um, but right now, super simple. Go to the web, drag and drop, and everything's accessible by your whole team. Uh, and so we really wanted to make it easy for you to get access to this. Uh, when you start using the product, what we've done for the preview is we have a bunch of predefined layouts. These are common web layouts. Um, and then we also have several sample apps. George is gonna walk you through um, both of these. But the idea is, instead of just dumping you into some IDE, um, use something to get started. So start with our people app, start with our team collaboration app and then start to sort of reverse engineer what's going on on the screen. And before you know it, you're gonna be highly productive um, building really cool, beautiful apps in no time. Uh, of course, this wouldn't be possible unless there was controls. So what we've done for this preview is we have about 30 controls in the toolbox. Um, in our Ignite UI product, there's probably 70 or more controls. We're gonna to continue to add more components but for the preview, you pretty much have everything you need um, for a, uh, you got the 80-20, right? 80% of the controls are in there that you need to build an application, including things like a grid, all the inputs, all the buttons, nav navigation, menus, avatars, lists, repeaters, all this stuff is in there. So um, we believe that you can absolutely be productive today um, with this, and it will help you just start designing that screen that you know you need for your next project. When we talk about design systems and UI kits, um, obviously design systems are patterns and they have rules, and that's why they're good for enterprises and organizations that are building software. Um, and, and, and really the driver behind that is what's my branding? What is the user experience that my customers expect when they experience my application? So what we've done is we've shipped um, six built-in themes, light and dark themes for fluid material, um, our fluent material UI and bootstrap. Um, and then we let you create your own custom themes that match your brand. And all of this is built in today. We're gonna continue to add things like more typographies, um, more built-in themes, et cetera. But you have control over the application level with the global theme, um, at the screen level with uh, you know a, a screen level theme. And then of course, at the individual component level. And what George will show you is, you know when you swap from material to fluent, you know, everything changes about that experience, the height of text boxes, the way the fonts are, the, the spacing, everything. So this ends up being something really critical. Um, theming and branding is a high priority for developers um, because again, CSS is very difficult. <laughs> well, guess what? You don't need to worry about it anymore. Um, and then the real, you know, thing that gets you, you really kind of juiced here is that I can click you know, preview this app, and then in real time, I'm looking at the HTML, TypeScript, and CSS for this. So um, this goes beyond your typical inspect tool uh, that you might have in Zeppelin or even Indigo Design. I mean, this is actually the actual code for uh, this uh, this project. So uh, what happens is anything that you design, you can preview, and then as part of that preview, um, you get to see exactly what the code output will look like. And in this preview what we have is Angular. So today it's all about Angular because we had Angular code generation already for Indigo Design, um, if you've used that in the last couple of years, but we're adding more um, platforms before we release. So you'll be able to experience you know, your platform of choice as we move forward. And then finally, 
this is slick. I can preview it, but I, I can also just download a zip file. Um, I download my zip file, uh, unzip it, npm install, npm start, and bam, there's my application with all the routing, navigation. Um, it's pixel perfect. It's exactly what you designed. There's no difference. So when I say game changing, this is game changing. The amount of time and the amount of money this is going to save you and your team to deliver faster and get faster results is absolutely incredible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let Constantine take over the microphone for a minute and talk about the high level view of this digital product design platform. So we've got App Builder, which as a preview, we're kind of putting out there as a standalone URL. But really, App Builder integrates in with our entire Indigo Design story. Indigo Design is a digital product design platform. It has features like collaboration, user testing, prototyping, um, you know, history tracking, and, and all this other stuff for your entire team. Um, so Constantine, go ahead and unmute and kind of walk us through what this whole system looks like. Absolutely, thank you, Jason. And so uh, let's take a look at the bigger picture because uh, in George's demo, what you're gonna see is actually the centerpiece of this diagram that Jason is currently showing. And this is the app builder. And why, why I'm saying is the centerpiece is because if we look at um, uh, an app life, life cycle, uh, and the life cycle, by life cycle, I mean from conception to production, uh, an app life cycle usually starts with um, uh, certain views, certain screens, certain designs being done in um, uh, tools that your designers would choose. And such tools would be Sketch, uh, Adobe XD, uh, Figma, or anything else uh, big that they, they would want to use. And so when, when those designs are done, um, certain behaviors are going to be defined on top of them, uh, meaning screen transitions, you know, behaviors of certain buttons, certain UI parts, so on and so forth. And then this design would actually be turned into code by um, a group of developers or by a single developer. And then you would have certain prototype uh, in terms of a running application code-wise. And um, this prototype will get approved, and then you know the uh, app lifecycle will continue until all of the screens are, you know, designed, created, uh, put into production, and uh, finally you have the running application. And so what we're looking to do is actually, you know, close the entire cycle of this. And uh, we wouldn't only let you start uh, in the app builder and get some code out because your designers may already be using Sketch and they wouldn't want to uh, switch entirely to working in the app builder. And we would allow them to do so by uh, extending, you know, uh, the design system with UI kits, which are specific to design tools like Sketch, XD, and Figma that I already mentioned. And then by uh, when those UI kits are used in order to design screens uh, with this design system, uh, we can um, correlate to existing components that we have out of these exa uh, this exa design system. And so we let you load those already designed screens into the app builder, modify them, define um, uh, dependencies between them, define transitions, define uh, navigation, so on and so forth and then turn that directly into code. And that, that whole process will take zero coding until you get the running application in code and you actually want to apply your business logic on top of that, like proprietary services, like anything that you cannot load in a public um, SaaS like the App Builder. And then Indigo Design lets you uh, do other stuff on top of that. And so once, once you have uh, built prototypes uh, with the App Builder, for example, you would be able to utilize features like the usability studies that are already available in Indigo Design. Now in this architecture, you see that there are some grayed out parts. Those are the ones that are not yet co covered. Like for example, we currently have the, UI, the full UI kit for Sketch and we have the full component suite for Angular. But we already have some UI kits, for example, for XD and for Figma. They're just not up to date with the Sketch one. But as soon as they get there, you also are going to get the same functionality using those, um, those design tools with the uh, App Builder. 
And the same, uh, the, the same story holds for other components, like for other libraries and frameworks. So when all, all of the uh, design system components are available in React, you can just turn the same design that you already had and you have a running application for Angular with that design into a React application or into a Blazor application or web components. So that's what I wanted to talk about. And maybe we should move to the flashy part with George. Or well, are you I'm going to show a couple more slides, but I want to ask you a couple of questions. Um, so one of the things we've talked about is, um, you know, uh, allowing uh, our customers to use the common app model. So if they want to create the, their own code generators or they want to create their own custom components, talk about a little bit on the extensibility side that your team has in mind as we ship this product next year. So that's an excellent question, J uh, Jason. So uh, in one of the first diagrams, we actually uh, had the app builder together with the common app model in a box. And um, uh, we decided to separate them because they really aren't, uh, you know, um, going together. So the common app model is a way for us to define applications uh, in an agnostic, in a framework agnostic way, uh, meaning this is metadata that comes from let's say different ui cases from, from from a design system that um, our tooling our services can understand and can actually turn into framework specific code and so this metadata is is text-based model right it's it's not some kind of json that that we define as some, some kind of model that you can uh you know um describe in terms of um different uh, metadata that, that you even write, um, you know, yourself. And so uh, what that means is that uh, not only the app builder can plug into this app model. Actually, even, even now, the code gen bypasses the uh, app builder if you work directly with uh, sketch designs. So if you upload a sketch design to Indigo Design and then open it into our um, Visual Studio Code extension, you can turn this design, this view, directly into Angular code without going through the app builder. And that's because we have the common app model. And so the common app model is the centerpiece that we can expose like uh, public definitions of, and you can tap directly into it and use it with our code generation service, for example. Wow, that's cool. So yeah, so one of the things is over the last you know five years, <clears throat> we've been getting customer feedback on this tool um and, and this was well before we started building it right because we had sort of some solutions around indigo design um but extensibility ended up being something that people wanted so they want to they don't want a black box they want to be able to add their own extensions they want to be able to use our common app model they even want to be able to license and use our designer in their application so we are thinking about all that stuff and again feedback at indigo.design for um, for what you guys would like to see in something like that. So we're getting questions on the chat line about what's next and features and whatnot. So let me talk about what's next before we go into the demo. So coming soon is design tools integration. Constantine already mentioned this, you saw it in the diagram, but we, when we ship, we fully uh, will support Adobe XD, which is the number one request from our customers for Indigo Design, Sketch, which is number two, and kind of number one at times, and then Figma. So we will support those big three. Um, if you're a design team in a small shop or in the enterprise, you're using one of these, two of these, or all three of these. So these are the big ones. We plan on supporting those with UI kits, um, with import into App Builder, into Indigo Design, and then you can take that right in and generate code. So imagine the scenario where your design team sends you something in Indigo or, or, or in Adobe XD, and you can just uh, start using it in a WYSIWYG like Indigo Design App Builder, modify it, and then generate code. Um, so we're pretty excited about that. Um, more app frameworks. We already had a question about um, uh, Blazor. Yeah, Blazor will come. Web Components will come. React will come. Um, like I mentioned early on, we did Angular first because we already more or less had it done. We, we did completely rewrite our code generator um, that we had uh, out already. So the code generator uh, now, instead of going to Angular, goes to the common app model, um, which is like a parser. And then from the common app model, we just write these generators to the specific platform. So 
by the time we ship next year, late Q1, early Q2, we want to support React um, and web components in Blazor. If we don't do that on day one, maybe we'll get it on day three, but that's our goal. And then as you guys look at what Infragistics is doing, today Twitter's blowing up because we just shipped our um, uh, ultimate UI for Uno platform. We just shipped our ultimate UI for WinUI, which is the next generation UI for Microsoft. You know, we're, uh, we're, we're, we're completely aware that those are frameworks that people are going to want to integrate. So uh, we are looking at everything. Our goal is not to make you bend to our needs. It's we're going to make sure this tool um, delivers for you. So feedback at indigo.design. Tell us what you want. Live data connections. You'll see today we've got a mock Excel data source. But at the end of the day, the tool is not going to be useful unless you can use your own data. So be that a SQL Server connection, a REST uh, um, URL, OData, your own Excel files, metadata, whatever. Um, we're going to continue to improve the data story inside of uh, Indigo App Builder, which means that when you look at the code today and you're like, oh, shouldn't that be um, something that I'm, you know, in my TypeScript to go and pull data? Yeah, you're right. Um, but guess what? When we ship, it will be there. It just won't be um, those HTML um, widgets. And then lots more controls. I mentioned today earlier, we had 30 components in the toolbox. There's probably 70 to 80 components in our Angular product if you add everything up, including all of our charts. Um, we're gonna incrementally release these and they'll all be shipped by the time we ship. But even cooler, as you'll see the second from the last bullet is custom controls. So the design goal from day one was customers have their own controls how can they live within our toolbox? So uh, we have a big, um, one of our big software integrators I met with a couple years ago said, listen, this is great, but I've already got all this domain specific stuff. We work in this specific industry and they all have their own rules and I have my own components. Can I use them in your tool? Um, the goal is yes, there'll be a package format for the toolbox. It'll light up in the designer somehow, and then it'll light up the property editor. So. Uh, you're not just restricted to what Infragistics thinks you should be using. Um, so actually, it's going to be pretty cool and exciting. Um, so again, we need feedback, please. Feedback at indigo.design. Uh, use that email um, for all of your needs uh, for through this uh, private preview. There's going to be a lot on Twitter, um, on LinkedIn, and on our website um, for information. So make sure that you're keeping track of our mailers and, and what's going on. And with that, let's uh, let's let George take over because this is the cool stuff. He's going to walk you through Indigo Design. Um, we're going to be monitoring the chat um, window here. Brian and uh, Constantine are on there already, and um, let's let George take it away. So, George, I'm going to go on mute, and you've got the uh, you have got the ball. Let me make sure you've got the ball. Yep, you're the presenter, George. Yep, sounds perfect. So what I'm going to do uh, in my demo is prove, prove out uh, the value propositions Jason was making is how do you get pixel perfect apps, you know, pretty much from day one. And how do you design with real components uh, in, a, in a way such that there is no explicit handoff happening because the medium in which you're designing is actually not changing. Whatever you ended up designing in, that is the same thing which is being continued in your IDE. And that is the whole promise of Indigo Design. It's, it's an accessible space available to everybody, uh, and they can also act, actually work together instead of uh, shuttling, you know, a visual design spec to somebody and somebody inspecting it uh, to see what the margins are or what the colors are, because everything belongs to the same design system. So the fastest way to get started with Indigo Design App Builder is that when you see this new project dialog and anybody who kind of signs up for a new account, uh, and this is uh, not time bound in any way, you can take you can use the public preview for as long uh, as we have it open. Um, so when you launch the app, there are two ways you can get started. The first way is just to say, hey, these are some standardized layout templates uh, which we have created for you. But the real fast way to see, okay, what kind of code does it generate? What, what's the app layout structure look like? I think you should get started with one of our um, sample apps, for example, the team collaboration app. And when you have it open, you can see the full on uh, experience of how we have created this uh, app and we have tried to make sure that it's a realistic app so all the layout uh, challenges 
have been resolved. So you can also see, okay, how did they actually do this? How is this uh, content section here spread apart from uh, the content section on the right? And then that will reveal to you that we also have common concepts from web layouts like uh, paddings and margins also apply directly. You can quickly check out what the theming story looks like. Uh, this is the themes toolbox on the left is all the components which we are shipping right now with for the public preview. The next we have the views, which actually talks about uh, how the master view basically ref reflects the app component level. And then you have child views, which are kind of being injected based on navigation. Uh, and then we have the data story, which Jason talked about. Uh, is right now we have a mock data source, but we are going to um, reveal other uh, capabilities for it such that you can actually bring in your own data. And then we have themes, uh, which are based on three core themes, which is Material, Fluent, and Bootstrap. And as you can see, what Jason said is that I can just click on it, and then it's almost instantaneous, is that it's an app-level theme, which allows you to standardize on how every piece of UI would look across every app, doesn't matter who actually started working on this design uh, in the first place. And that's what the design system is also helping doing, is to standardize and scale uh, this particular effort. And once you have done playing with it, you can actually see what the preview looks like. And this is actually extra special because in our preview, what we're doing is that it, even though this looks like a canvas, it's actually not really a canvas. Uh, it's actually a running application. And when you are actually hitting the preview here, this is actually taking away some of the toolbars and stuff such that you can interact with this app as if it's a, it's a real application. And this way you can see, okay, what does that, uh, the sizing, the fluid sizing, how does that actually work? Because we have implemented Flex, and I'll talk about this in more detail uh, uh, very, very shortly, but you can actually try out how this thing would behave and see how our navigation, our dropdown list control, all of these things, how they are being styled and how, it, how it's being resized. And then you can toggle on the code view, which you were seeing in the GIF, uh, Jason was showing during the presentation, but here's the proof is in the pudding, right? You can actually see how kind of the, the how clean and optimized this code is, and we are separating it out into TypeScript and CSS. And then once you feel like this, everything is looking good, you have created all the views you need. Your next step is not really a handoff, but you're basically generating this app to continue this work. And when you hit generate app, it basically puts it uh, a, a zip file for you. And I have the zip file open inside of. Uh, Visual Studio Code or whatever IDE you like. And this is basically the source folder. As you can see that it actually generated this My Tasks component HTML. Uh, it has the SCSS, the TypeScript, everything available for you here. And then all you need to do is use the common commands of compiling, which is like npm install, if you have Node.js already installed, and then npm start. And that will pretty much give you a running application which looks exactly like the, the design you have actually created. So now that I've given you a, 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 I blitzed through the, the whole workflow, let me talk about specific aspects of the uh, App Builder uh, public preview. And let's start with layouts, right? So for that, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go ahead here, come up and create a brand new uh, UI. And let's pick a UI which has this header navigation uh, kind of defined. I'm just gonna double click on it. It creates a brand new project. And in this template, we have already configured the navigation. Uh, such that view one and view two would navigate to two child views. So it's like child view one and child view two. And if I look at the views list here, those are the views which are living under it. And from here, let me show you how the drag and drop pretty much works. It's pretty straightforward. <laughs> you can drag and drop the layouts, which have been exposed as these column layouts and row layouts, because we are kind of re-implementing CSS flex for you. Because you're building web apps, and we want to make sure that whatever you end up designing, it subscribes to what web, la web layouts are expecting. So in order for you to say, create a sign-in dialog, all you would do is you would just drag a row layout and it places in the center, or I can just move this for the canvas level. I can say, hey, I want it uh, to be top left uh, and stretch, oops. Let's do stretch and left. And that basically adds a container with min size in here. And I can change the orientation of this kind of a layout. And for creating a sign-in dialog, I think a column layout works. And then I can just start adding components. So for example, if I need a heading, I get a title, I drag and drop it in here. And you can see that the heading 
is a component from in, coming from the design system, which means all the type scale has already been defined for you. And right now it's being driven by material. And then if I want some input fields, I can just go ahead and do that. I can say input group and drag and drop it in here. But of course, there's a faster way. Uh, we have something called a quick add, which is available to you with a control E or a command E, uh, where E stands for everything. And with that, I can actually work much faster. So I can say, hey, I need another input group. And this time I need a password. And then give me a checkbox and give me uh, a label, a text. Give me a button. Let's copy and paste this button. And as you can see, everything works uh, pretty fluidly just because the same logic, because it's a design system, the buttons already have standardized styles for material. I can say I need an outline style. I can just say uh, create account. And this one can be a sign in. And now just because I'm using flex, I can actually position this to the center of the canvas by actually setting some properties on the parent of this child view. And I can do that by clicking on this go up a level. And it's the same thing as shown in the outline view because it keeps in uh, everything in sync, right? So I can go up one level and on the parent level, I can say, hey, I want you in the center of the canvas, both vertically and horizontally. And then you can see everything is actually sized by content. I can actually give it some width. I can say, hey, I want you to be 500 pixels. And in, in terms of dimensions, we actually also support other dimensions if you're curious. And then let's just add some uh, padding to the whole thing. I can say 32 pixels. And then let's select everything because we also have multi-select uh, implemented. And I can say, hey, I want margin bottom on all of this to be 16 pixels. And as you can see, the layout actually is working really fast. And I can select child elements like this. I can right click and then retrospectively add it to a layout. So I can say add it to a row layout. And inside this row layout, I can say, hey, why don't you space between and vertically, why don't you center? As you can see at this point, my sign in dialog is already done. And when I hit preview, the code is being generated pretty much instantaneously. I can turn the code view off. And as I resize my canvas, oops. You can see it states uh, pretty much centered on this thing. And the navigations are also working right out of the box. This is the view one and view two child is the one we were changing. Going back here, let's just add something else here. Let's just do uh, a list component. And I am adding the list component to show you what kind of data binding or what the data binding story would look like uh, for, for even a mock data source, which is the same process you would use when we expose uh, your own custom data sources. So in this case, I'm going to select this item and I'm just going to say, hey, why don't you repeat based on data and select employees, right? And it's repeating to a count of five, but I can always remove it and say max and it'll show me everything. But we set uh, allowed a way for you to uh, control the number of items is just to make the design time experience more manageable. So in here now, once I have bounded to that collection, I can just go in here and say connect the title to name and I want the subtitle to be connected to something like title. And this stuff here, what's showing up in this dropdown is the very same um, fields. You're actually seeing it in here. So for example, there's the employees table, which has all those fields available. And you know your data source, so this would be easy for you uh, once you have configured your own. But now I can select this particular avatar here and say, hey, I don't want an icon. I actually want an image. And I have an image for you from my avatars. And that's it. My data binding story pretty much uh, works the same way. And when I preview it, you can see that now, because it's in the design time, we are kind of ignoring uh, the, the sizes you have given. But the reason I'm showing you this is uh, in the code gen, you will see that it's being defined as if you would have defined data binding uh, for this particular component. And this is the kind of, uh, data binding story we want to support is when you generate code, you want to make sure that it's actually compliant and works with that uh, platform concept. Now let's go back to the design quickly. I showed you what the layout uh, concept looks like. I can just select things and delete them. And it's almost like a design time experience. 
Uh, but we have tried to make it friendly and more understandable for people who may not be that familiar with concepts like flex, uh, which is why we have actually changed names also a little bit. We call it vertical align and horizontal align than something else. Now, in terms of app themes, Jason also mentioned that when you switch from material to something else, so I'll give you an example. Let's get rid of this label here and add a switch just to make it more apparent. When I switch my themes, from say material to say fluent you can see that the that you might have not noticed it it's very subtle but the label the switch has completely transformed if i switch to a different app it becomes more pronounced so this one is a, a form like ui i have created with material and as you can see material has this fancy um, floating label right which which floats up when the thing is empty and when it's when it's not empty it floats back inside and as you can see, these are real components which you can actually uh, type in. Uh, and these are like select boxes, right? Which also are components which we are shipping with our public preview. But for Fluent, the experience is slightly different, right? So if I switch over to the Fluent for this particular form, I go to Fluent Lite and I hit preview. You see the labels are now fixed because that's the expectation in tools like Fluent. So depending on what your app language is, you would pick a theme which is closer to uh, what your design system actually looks like, or you can use R as a starting point and move on with it. But once you have actually applied the theme and you say, okay, this is great, but I, I have more customizations. What kind of customizations are available right now? I can show you that you, you wanna do something brand new. You just come in here, start a new theme, and then you can start with one of the base themes, which is Material, Fluent, or Bootstrap. Say that I stick with uh, uh, with Material, I can open up the colors and then you'll see that anytime you pick a color for the primary color or the secondary color, because everything is driven by variables here, it automatically generates a palette for you. And these are the palettes which we are gonna use throughout the application for various application states. It could be the hover state, it could be the press state for a button. These are all pesky details which we do not want anybody to waste time on. But at the same time, after you're done with it, we want everything to look cohesive, right? And that's the speed to market we are kind of promising that once you're done with applying themes this way, everything will still look like they belong to the same family as, as opposed to going um, you know, willy-nilly with the local, local styling. The same thing I can do with my secondary color. Let me pick something a little darker here. I don't know how this is gonna look, but let's just uh, name this theme, demo theme save it and that would just go ahead it created my custom themes now it applied it and it doesn't doesn't look very good but the the reason i applied such a garish look is now when you look at the appearance property for this particular layout it has a primary 700 color uh, being applied on it and when you open the color picker here you would see that the color picker is now hydrated by the the theme you created uh, and the idea behind here is to tell everybody hey stick within uh, this realm so that when we switch themes in the future you actually do not need to go uh, localized to each and every component trying to make sure that it does everything look correct because that's this kind of work which you do not want to waste time on and help it uh, and standardize it across from an app level uh, theme perspective again talking about the preview um, Okay, let's just fix this theme. This looks a little too too strong for me. All right, that's better. Um, so in the in the preview area, as you can see, it's a way for you to interact uh, directly with the design without having all our adorners and stuff getting in the way. So you get a feel for what your app is gonna look like. And this is the kind of assurance we wanna promise is that this is the kind of look and feel you're gonna get right out of the box so that it has a great level of fidelity and consistency in what you end up doing. And of course, I talked already about this resizing and being able to see code uh, run side by side. So you know whether this code is, is, is something which you can get behind and we believe you can, uh, but we are trying to keep it as clean and optimized uh, as possible. Now, the thing I did not talk about is uh, some specific components uh, can have some interesting behaviors. So for example, uh, let's add a button here. And I'm just adding it inside that row layout. So it's gonna pop itself right there. But I can go ahead and say, hey, why don't you wrap? It goes below. And 
I can show you the interactions for some of the special components like drop down. So if I go and hit drop down, I can attach the drop down because when I try to drop it anywhere else, it's saying no, you can't do it because it's looking for a, a meaningful trigger. So I can say, yep, the button is the trigger for this drop down, and then I can create my drop down list. I can uh, repeat this uh, with with data, but then once I'm done with it, the drop down can be hidden during design time. And when I hit preview, you'll see that the drop down behaves. Oops, oops, something went wrong. So I need to fix this. Uh, but the drop down is available on one of the sample apps. So you can see it yourself how it's actually working. Let's go to one of those views here. Switch to the team collaboration app. And this one has a drop down applied. Um, on the home button here. And you can see how this hot drop down is actually configured. It's done exactly the same way you drag and drop. And then if you want to change its parent, you can just select something and say point it to a different direction, right? Uh, the components itself, as I see, as I told you, they tried, we have tried to make it simplified. And everything you see here, if you look at the developer documentation for Ignite UF or Angular, you will find that they are exactly the same. The capabilities we are offering about setting the type on it, what kind of content, whether it can have an icon icon or not, uh, disable, this, enable, all of this stuff is available from there. I go ahead, create a brand new view in that when I add a component like a card, you can see that what we are trying to do in the components area is we are trying to expose the structure of that particular card and also exposing some presets, which you can kind of quickly select. So for, this is the default for a card. I can switch to a social style, um, a media column, or an actions column, right? And then I can go ahead and say, okay, I want to customize it some more so I can go back to the default and say, yep, I want an avatar. And it knows exactly where to show up based on material. Uh, I don't want content or I want only buttons, things like that you're allowing you to customize as toggleable sections, right? Which you turn on and off. And then you can go ahead and say, okay, I want a special button style. So you can select that button directly and say, yeah, in my system, I want it to be a raised button, right? And you can actually do these kind of overrides uh, for, for these kind of components. And this is true for any of those components. So while I was showing you earlier with the list component, same thing, right? If I select the list item here, I can create new items, copies of it. I can select the list item and say, hey, you know what? Uh, I want you to be um, an avatar plus title, a single line. These kind of overrides and presets are actually built uh, directly uh, into the list item. And then when you select the list, you can you can go ahead and change uh, parts of it, uh, bind something to it. So when I bind a list item, it'll start repeating just that particular item. So you can go ahead and get rid of the dummy items which are added on top and bottom, but that's your choice, right? Maybe you wanna mix and match data bound sections and sections which are actually manually created. Now that I've covered the basics of app layout uh, by creating that signing dialog experience, I talked about how data binding is happening uh, directly on the surface. App themes, how you create your own app themes or not, and then showing you the preview, which allows you to see the code view experience uh, at, at real time, and also allowing you to interact directly with that particular design. Now let's talk a little bit more about what it looks like once you generate this particular app, right? So as I said earlier, when you hit generate app, it actually creates a zip file. And this is the very same zip file I have open here. And the thing I have done in terms of uh, the steps required for me to run this app, like an actual Angular application, is that I already have Node.js installed, which is a prerequisite. And then of course you need an IDE with a terminal like this. And then I went ahead and run uh, two commands, right? One was npm install, which is this one which kind of installs all the dependencies required for running this application. And after that, I went ahead and typed npm start, right? And these are the only two commands I have actually done in order to compile uh, this particular application. And that is the app running here. And the reason I'm pulling it up here is I wanted to show you pretty much side by side when I hit preview. There you go. Let me turn off code view because I already have a running app. There you go. This is the kind of fidelity we want to offer to give you the assurance that once you have actually seen how the design looks like in the preview, when you generate the app, you will 
not find any surprises, right? And if you do find surprises, it's just because we are in the public preview phase and we are always iterating on how to improve and optimize the code generation. But the idea here is everything you've done, all the hard work somebody has done, because sometimes the design team is more careful about, okay, the padding on this thing should be 32 pixels on this side and this side. Uh, the, the text should be H1s and this should be H2s. All of this kind of specificity can be done directly on the design time. And when the developer is consuming it, all they need to care about is what happens when you click on task one, right? Should I show a modal? Should it like do something else? Should it run some operation? Those kind of things are, 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 are things which you would do now that you have generated this particular app uh, in this guy. But here you can literally play spot the differences, you know, which are none. The only differences you're seeing about this wrapping is because I have a design which is it's wider than the, the the app builder here. So if I stretch this out, you'll see that it has a min size on that particular list, and it knows that to, to wrap based on that particular criteria. So that pretty much gives sure should give you a sense of how this thing is working. And everything I've been describing during this video, uh, during this webinar, is also available. I got ahead of myself there. Is also available to you as resources uh, for you to consume. And the best way to get hold of those resources is if you go and look at the main app menu. And you will see this when you uh, sign up uh, for the first time, uh, that these video tutorials are actually available right inside the app builder, uh, which have, we talk about those various areas I talked about, which is how do you get started with the sample app? How you actually handle app layouts, the Indigo design components, how app theming works, how the single page apps and navigation works, and how do you preview and generate uh, the app code. These kind of resources are available right here. And then if you are not a video person, uh, you can always click on help docs, which will take you to our um, help docs on preview, which basically walk you through the very same process. So it's all about repetition, um, and you can actually see uh, and read along how these app, uh, how app builder covers all those various scenarios of the interface overview, layouts, components, themes, et cetera. With that, Jason, anything I, you want me to kind of expand on even more, <clears throat> or do you want to take it from here? That is awesome. I will take it from here, George. Great demo. We had a lot of questions um, that uh, have been uh, going back and forth in the chat window, which is great. What I'm going to do is share my screen and very quickly, I want to highlight something because we're getting a lot of questions about, um, you know, templates and sharing and all this other stuff. And what I want to highlight uh, without going back to the architectural diagram is that, you know, as George always said, design uh, is a team sport. Um, there's, you know, no more handoffs. It's all everyone working together. So when we talk about Indigo Design as a product, it's already been in the market for many, many years. App Builder is a new piece to it. In this preview, App Builder is being pushed out separately, right? We are, um, we are not, you know, integrating it in with the whole thing because it's just easier uh, to get feedback, and we're still building it, and, and blah, blah, blah. So when you go to the um, Infragistics homepage and you go to Design to Code Indigo Design, you end up here. And if I go and sign in just to Indigo Design, what I want to highlight is, yeah, we have full support for teams and workspaces. We have prototypes. We have usability studies. We have uh, full tracking on everything that goes on with the design. Um, you know, so I actually have several teams here. This is my customer success team. And for example, if I go look at any one of these prototypes, I'll just click um, Edit Prototype here. Uh, just so you understand what the product does outside of App Builder, and then App Builder gets integrated in when we ship. Um, this is a full uh, a prototyping tool. So you have um, the ability to set transitions between um, your your screens. Um, you can share your screens with others. You can preview. Um, you can go right into inspecting. Um, so if you're using Zeppelin to get this stuff, like there's no reason. It's you already. If you already own Ultimate or Indigo Design, you can like cancel your Zeppelin subscription because we already have all this capability. Um, so what, what I wanna highlight is that there's a very big platform here that does team um, digital product development all the way from design 
um, out to code output. And depending on your persona, where you fit in, um, you'll use specific tools. So for example, um, the reason I can get this information here and copy code or download images or look at size constraints, et cetera, um, is because we're ingesting your sketch files directly from Sketch. So when Constantine said, we already have Sketch, we're gonna add Adobe XD and Figma by the time we ship, you'll get the same experience with, with XD and Figma. So your design team is working on stuff. Um, you're using Indigo Design um, as a repository for product that you're building. You're doing usability studies with end users. So for example, um, if I open up this usability study, <clears throat> you get <clears throat> all kinds of analytics and reporting on the usability study. Um, you can see expected path, alternate paths, where people got bogged down, what they clicked on, um, what the path actually looked like. You can record videos. There's all this stuff that you know you can get out of the Indigo Design um, product. So there's a broader picture here besides app building. And so when there was questions around, can I invite my team? Can I share? Yeah, that's already all built in. Um, we're now going to integrate App Builder into Indigo Design. Um, so you have all of that capability, sharing, custom templates, design systems, um, you know, uh, a concurrent, concurrent editing. Um, all of that is built into the product. So, uh, you know, you're going to be getting a lot of information around Indigo Design, design to code, prototyping, digital design platform, and it all kind of flows together. Um, and where you start is right off the homepage. Go right to Indigo Design. You can read about the value of the product here. And then up here, you've got this App Builder preview, which takes you to um, the App Builder story, um, which is a nice website. And then, of course, basically what we talked about. And then you can just go ahead and click Try Now. And then you get dumped right into the App Builder. And just to show you again, I'm going to create a new app. Let me let me do this task management app. I'm already in here. I can see my child views, and this is how easy it is to get started. So, you know, there's really a very little barrier to entry here for you guys to kick this thing off. Um, so let's wrap this up. Uh, we've almost spent an hour today. Thank you for your time. Let me go back to my slides and um, let me go. Okay, so get started today. There's the Bitly. And I want to thank the, the guys today um, for presenting. And, and here's all of our contact information. Constantine is our director of product development. He runs this entire product team that's been working on this. George is our, you know, the brain trust behind all of the UX and the interactions. And, um, you know, it's funny because we use Indigo Design to build Indigo Design. Um, I'll show you that in a second as well. And then, of course, Brian has been very active on the chat here, answering all these questions. Um, so there's a lot, lot of good feedback, and we're kind of going to digest all this and, and talk about it. But, but real quick, if I go back to this screen and let me go uh, back to Indigo Design, if I look at our App Builder team, um, and you know, when I say we use Indigo Design to build Indigo Design, um, this is everything that we did to actually build this product. And it's all prototypes. It's all been usability tested um, with the entire team through Indigo Design. So it's pretty cool how we use our own tool. So um, this is a team, it's a private team. No one has access to it. It's all invite only um, and everything is tracked. Who does what, all of the activity, um, what changes, what the usability tests are. So um, usability studies um, have occurred here on various scenarios, so it's actually pretty slick. And then I've got my own projects that um, I work on and I'm doing test code generation with. But that is, um, I just wanted to highlight that because I think it's pretty cool. Um, and if I go back to our slides again, um, I just want to say thank you for everyone for attending. Um, please go to uh, Indigo dot design and sign up today please send us feedback at indigo design we'll stay on for maybe a few more minutes and answer questions i pretty much uh think a lot of these questions have been asked and answered but there's still more coming in so we'll be online i'll go on mute and um thanks again everyone and thanks to the whole team for presenting great job george i really appreciate your uh, demo today